We're going to cover some more JavaScript. We're going to have the course evaluation and North Ridgeville, they should have a course evaluation for you somewhere. So if you don't see one, I don't know if there's someone there, go and see if you can find it. All right. And then in the lab, I hope to see a preview of some of your final projects to see where you're at and, and uh, to offer any assistance I can. And maybe look at what other folks are doing as well. Pardon me? No, those were actually due yesterday. So no, I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, they're not due until next week. Oh. Yeah, so it, it's due. I believe, I believe it's all like it's due like the Wednesday of finals week. So, okay. yeah, this is our last class. Now I am available if you need me next week from Tuesday on. You just have to contact me to set up an appointment if you don't want to risk coming in and and me not being here because I don't have the regular schedule. Um, during finals week. All right, we talked about JavaScript last time and one of the things that JavaScript provides is the ability to make small changes to the page without reloading to the server, w without having to reload the entire page, without requesting a new page for the server. And so we saw examples on it on the one site of if you put your mouse over a menu, you get a bigger menu, uh, a submenu drop down. Um, we saw a, a slight variation for that. Believe it or not, the code is very similar to where I had uh, spoilers, I, I think, if I remember right. The door, the door is mostly closed. I don't know. Someone is apparently doing something. Make a lot of noise. It's distracting. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. Um, we saw where we could show spoilers by clicking on a button and it made, uh, made something that previously was vis uh, invisible visible. What we're going to do now is we're going to do one of the classic examples of that and that is like a thumbnail mouse over effect. I have two pictures here I took from a blizzard that I was in in Pittsburgh. All right. There's that one and this one. I took these pictures so I don't have to worry about copyright. I'm going to name them one and two. And I'm going to make a thumbnail version of it. Now you can make thumbnails a number of different ways. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go in paint and shrink it down. But there's other ways to make thumbnails as well. All right. For example, you could crop and make ju take just a portion of the image and make it a thumbnail. Uh, that could be effective. There's no rule that says a thumbnail, and a thumbnail is simply a smaller version of the picture, but there's no rule that says it has to be the entire picture. You certainly can make it just part of the picture if you want. Um, No, I, I don't want that. I want 20%. Probably even gone smaller, but we'll, we'll leave it at that. And I'm going to save this as one T for the thumbnail. And I'll do the same thing with two. So we'll have two copies of each picture, the big version and the little version. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place these on a page. I'm going to place the two thumbnails on a page. And I'm going to then allow the ability to put your mouse over one of the images and make the bigger version of that image appear. 
I'm going to start CSS. And then, depending on time, I might add some CSS if, I, if, if time allows us to do that. Um, in the example that we did last time, I changed the web page, if you remember, by changing the CSS. That is, I set something visible that was invisible. In this case, I'm going to change something in a similar way, but I'm going to be changing not the CSS, but I'm going to be actually dynamically changing the HTML. Dynamic is a word that you hear sometimes relating to web development. When you hear the word dynamic, think changing. All right, if I talk about a dynamic web page, I'm talking about a web page that changes. For example, a new site would be a dynamic page, right? Because if I looked at it now, if I looked at it even an hour from now, I'm likely to get um, a different page. The opposite of dynamic is static. Static means it doesn't change. If I went, let's say, to a restaurant and looked at their menu, if I look today, if I look an hour from now, chances are, unless someone manually went in and changed their menu, that uh, it's going to be the same. So dynamic pages can change without anyone manually making a change. All right. So I'm going to put the HTML here for the content. And then I'm going to put the two thumbnails in their own section. And I'm going to put one of the bigger pictures in the section. Now I'm going to do this for just one image, but you could easily extend this for as many images as you had and make a little photo gallery. So I'm going to put the thumbnail in their own section. I'm going to put the big picture in its section. So, if I go and save this, I end up having this. All right. I have the two smaller pictures and the big picture. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to edit these again because they're still kind of gigantic. So let me go in and edit these again real quick to make them a little more reasonable. I'll cut both of them in half. And this should be more the way that I had intended it to look. All right. So now we see them, and they are side by side. Why are they side by side? Because I do not have the HTML shim in there, or shiv. Shiv or shim or whatever. All right. I can go in and I can easily Google that and put that in there. 
The reason for that, again, is that we do not have an HTML5 compliant version of Internet Explorer. So, We could put that code in. I'm feeling exceptionally lazy today, so I'm just going to open up in Chrome. There we go. And now we have the thumbnails across the top of the page and the bigger picture on the bottom. Now again, I have two pictures here. I would like to have more than two pictures. What I want to do is I want to make it so that if I put my mouse on a picture, it changes this picture down here. So if I put my mouse on this guy, I get the bigger version of that guy. So, if you remember, when we talked about JavaScript last time, we said the ingredients for JavaScript sort of went like this. We have HTML events. We did an on click last time to click a button. Today we're going to do an on mouse over. There's a whole bunch of events. On mouse over, on mouse out, on key down, on key up, on key press, and so on. So we're going to do on mouse over. There's the DOM, which allows us to point to something on the page. And if you remember, we used an ID to do that. We said something like document, get element by ID, and that allowed us to point to something that had that specific ID. And then we have JavaScript commands to go and set things to new values. Now, in this case, we know that the on the, the mouse uh, the the event that we want to trap is we want an on mouse over. We want an on mouse over over both of these, right? Because when we put our mouse over this one, we want this image to show. When we put our mouse over this one, we want this image to show. So we're going to have two on mouse over events. All right. What is it do I, that I want to change about the page? I want to change it so that this image will become either 2.jpg or 1.jpg, depending on where the mouse was positioned. So if I was changing this by hand, what would I do? I would go in and I would change that from 1 to 2. That's the change that I want to make. All right. I want that to happen within the browser when I put my mouse over a particular element. So what I have to do, first of all, is I have to create an ID for this element. Because I have to be able to point to this element and say, I want to change this. So I'm going to give this an ID of big picture. All right. So now I can point to the thing on the page called big picture and I can change it. Sure. No, the order of the attributes doesn't really matter. I could I could put those in in any order I wanted. All right. So what I'm going to do, in fact, I'm going to go in and rearrange the order now because I'm going to put my on mouse over. And also the white space doesn't matter, as you can see here. 
I'm going to say on mouse over. All right, that's the user event. That's what's going to trigger this thing to happen. When I put my mouse over this image, the thumbnail, I want to change this image. So what do I want to do? I put in quotes the thing I want to change. How do I identify the thing I want to change? I use the ID. So I say document dot get element by ID and then I enclose in single quotes because I'm already using double quotes the ID that I want to do something with big picture now what do I want to change about it I want to change the SRC attribute all right that's what I want to change Originally, it's one .jpg. I want to change it to something else. So I specify the HTML attribute I want to change. And then I change it to whatever I want to change it to. In this case, when I mouse over the first thumbnail, I want it to set it to the first image. If I mouse over the second thumbnail, then I want to set it to the second image. Oops. So I have these two statements here that are just about the same, but in one case I change the big image to one JPEG, in the other case I change it to two JPEG. Notice again the use of quotes. The things that are part of the DOM are not enclosed in single quotes. The whole JavaScript expression from here to here is enclosed in double quotes. Within that JavaScript ex, uh, expression, the DOM elements, the DOM reserved words are not in quotes, but where I'm plugging in specific values, like what ID do I want? Big picture. What do I want to change it to? One dot JPEG. That is enclosed in single quotes. All right, you have to make sure, because again, we're already using the big, uh, the double quotes to indicate the big um, uh, the, the, the entire JavaScript uh, statement. So what this says is document means look on this web page. Get element by ID means find the thing on the page with this ID, which is this image right here. What do I want to change about it? I want to change the SRC attribute. Well, what's the SRC attribute? That's what controls what image we see. So it's as though I am dynamically going in and editing that HTML, except it's not me going in and editing, it's JavaScript that's going in and editing. And I can then set that to whatever I want it to. So let's go and save this and view it. So I put my mouse over that one that appears. Put my mouse over that one, that appears. And of course if you had more instruct uh, more thumbnails you could just extend that. All right. Now there's a lot more we could do with JavaScript. For example, we could write a JavaScript function because if you notice this line is almost the same as this line. The only difference is is that the specific image that we change it to. But we won't do that uh, in this class because uh, we're, we're running low on time. What could go wrong with this? And how do you find out if something does go wrong? Well, one of the big problems, or one of the, I won't say problems, one of the big things that is difficult for students sometimes is that JavaScript is case sensitive. 
So in other words, as far as upper and lower case, it has to be exactly like I have it here. Document all lowercase. Get element by ID. The first word is lowercase. Each subsequent word, the first letter, is uppercase. <clears throat> Even something as small as this, if I were to make this a capital D instead of a lowercase d. JavaScript will not understand that. So I go and hit refresh, nothing happens. Well, what do you do? Well, if you have a problem like this. Well, first of all, you remember the, the, the things that I'm going to say here as far as the common sources of JavaScript errors. One of the most common sources is, again, if you mix, mix up the case of it. The other thing you can do is if you click, depending on the browser, in Chrome, you can go to Tools and look at JavaScript Console. And I have to say, it doesn't give you a real clear description of what the problem is. It says undefined is not a function. Well, that, I mean, how, could, how more confusing can you be than that? But at the very least, it gives you the line that the problem is on. This is on line 17. And this is on line 13. So we can go back and look at our code. And actually, this is line 13. And this is line 17. In this case, it didn't even tell us exactly what line it was on, but it told us around where the problem was. So sometimes you have to um, read between the lines, so to speak, with that. Let's say I got the name of the picture wrong. I called it big pic instead of big picture. Well, again, it's going to give us an error. And again, it tells us can't set property SRC of null. Well, what that is saying is it can't find anything called big pic, therefore, that's null. And since you can't change the source attribute of something that's null, then it doesn't know what to do. So, the biggest tips I can offer is make sure you get the spelling right and make sure you get the spelling right including case. So, like if I did big picture like this, it also would not work. Why not? Well, because it's not called capital B big picture, it's called lowercase b big picture. And now we're back to working. Now when I say you can change just about everything on a page, I mean that. You can change just about everything on a page. You could change the position of things when you mouse over it. One of the things we uh, uh, I've, I've seen done as a joke, and, and I've done it, is you could, you could actually move a button when the user puts their mouse over it. You could actually, you know, push it out of their reach and mess with your users. I don't suggest you do that, but, you know, you could. Any questions about this? All you're really required to do is take one of my two examples that I gave, the example last time and the example this time, and just customize it for something of your own. So maybe do a little photo gallery or do a spoiler thing and all that. Yes. Oh, question. Okay. Questions concerning the product. Well, 
What if it is super basic? Well, I guess I would need clarification on exactly how basic super basic is. It doesn't need to be fancy. All right. Um, it simply would have to be something that I could look at and say, whatever the goals were for this, it accomplishes those goals. So, in some cases, remember that too complicated of a design is bad. So, in some cases, simple is good. Now, again, you could get so simple that it doesn't, you know, it's not meaningful. But, again, I, I would need more information to give an answer to that. Any other questions? All right, what I'm going to do now, and again, um, keep in mind that um, I, I uh, to, to, actually not today, but tomorrow morning I'm leaving, I'm going out of town, and I'll be back very early Monday morning. Um, I probably will sleep a lot on Monday. Um, that being said, please continue to email me if you have questions. I can't guarantee I'll be able to get to my email when I'm gone, but if I can, then I will. If not, then it will be there waiting for me when I get back. All right? So don't say, well, I, you were out of town, so I didn't email you this question. Email away. Again, if I can't get to it, I'll get to it when I get back. Uh, but I'll, you know, if I do have an opportunity to check my email when I'm gone, I will do that. If you need to see me next week, contact me to make an appointment for next week. Because, again, I don't have normal office hours or normal classes next week. Did you have a question? Yeah, don't, yeah th there's no regularly scheduled class on Monday. Uh, we don't have a final exam in this class. Your project is the final. So... Um, just turn that in and you should be okay. And that's actually due on, on Wednesday if, if memory serves. All right. I did post other information about the end of the semester, you know, uh, and, and be sure to read that. And uh, that's about it. What we're going to do now is we're going to have the course evaluation. The folks in Ridgeville, um, the, the, uh, if you go and contact them, they should have evaluation forms for you. And uh, folks here, I'm going to need a volunteer to take this to the business office, BU-211J. No, BU-211J is my office, BU-211. You, you oh, I was going to say, it's, it's not hard. You just have to t take these up there and, and hand them to them. Uh, let me take a second to say...